Hi everyone, trust you all are doing well and welcome back to the channel. If you're new, welcome to the channel. All right, so what we're going to do in this one is we're going to be learning about data binding in LifeWire. All right, so I've got an input field right here. And now if I type in anything right here, it needs to sync this input with our first name public property right here. Okay, so let's quickly do that. All right, so I've got an input field from our JetStream component right here. And I call our user details called public first name right here. Now, in order to sync this public property right here with our input field right here, we use the wire model director right here. All right. And then we can assign it to the first name. Now, in order for you to actually be displayed like there, you just go to your extensions, you go to LiveWire language support. Okay. This right here. So that's why it kind of give me the suggestions right there. Livewire language support. All right. That's just a side note. Now, when we add the wire model directive like here, all right, this attribute right here, now this first name right here is now sync with this input right here so when we ever we type in anything in this input field the y the first name property will automatically update let me show you all right so if i add it and as as you can see it updates accordingly all right if we open up our term uh, dev tools right here so if, if we go to network tab and if i type in anything like there you can see it fires off an event and send AJAX request to the server after by default 150 milliseconds. Let me make this a little bit bigger for you guys. So after every 150 milliseconds that event fires off inside our input field and sends an AJAX request right there. But let's say you don't want that default behavior to be there. All right, you can actually change that to be whatever you want. Now, in this case, let's change it to be one second. All right, so we can change the debounce right here. By default, it is 150 milliseconds. So, if we add the live wire model right there, you could view it if this was written behind that wire model right there. By default, 150 milliseconds but we want to change it to be a thousand milliseconds okay so let's go back to the browser we refresh let's uh, type in something now genus as you can see it updates accordingly right so if i go there again it will wait one second and instead of let's say uh, type a lot it waits a second and then it only sends a request to the server all right now you might wonder how does this happen okay by default lava will add on your input fields to event listeners all right the, the index one right here this is basically for the debounce okay so when this is for your debounce to, to determine how many milliseconds so let's go quickly go do this one right here let's just go there just to show you it will model sync the debounce you put the callback and the time obviously the time at the moment is 150 milliseconds by default so if there is no dot debounce on there it adds 150 milliseconds okay so that's the first event that fires off the other one is it listening for any input field right there so when that fires off it adds an event listener to the input field so whatever happens there it will basically update the model so basically the directive has and it will get the model and it will change it and all that kind of stuff all right so there's another one that we can add as well instead of when there's a, in this case we added 150 milliseconds on there now we can obviously add a change event so whenever let's say we just do this so if the user types in something here and as soon as they go out of focus 
then they change event needs to fire off and then only update that. So we can do that with another directive. We can change this to wire from wire model dot We can change it to wire dot lazy like this. So whenever the user go out of focus or there's a change, basically it's like a change event that fires off. All right. So let me change this to an S. As you can see, nothing happens. As soon as I go out of focus, that change event fires off. Now, if we go to that input field again, you will see it doesn't fire off that sync model synchronized debounce. It fires off a change event right there. Okay, so if we go there, you can see it fires off a different event for that. Okay, so with the dot lazy, it fires off a change event. Okay, let me just refresh this again. So as you can see, if I type in anything in there, nothing happens until I go out of focus. All right. Now, in order to sync your input fields, you can obviously don't obviously need a text input. There's different types of input that actually gets. We can add the wire model attribute to, and I'll quickly type them out for you. Let's go to the code editor. I will quickly show you. Right, so the first one is obviously the text one. Then we can add an event model, Y model, to our input, to our checkbox, our select and text areas. Right, so I'm not going to demonstrate on these ones. I'm just going to use the select one quickly, just to kind of to add that Y model to this one. So let's add that Y model, and we're going to add that to the first name. Okay, and then we're just going to do a couple of options, and this one is going to be Jenna. Let's copy this down three times. Let's do a John and a Max. All right, so obviously this needs to update whenever we do something in here, it needs to update that input field. So I'm just going to comment that one up for now. So let's see if it works. All right, so if I select John right there, as you can see, it updates accordingly. All right, quite nice way for us to actually work with likewise stuff. All right, so the other thing that we want to do is, let's say you've got an input field, because normally for a select field right here, I don't want to do an update like that immediately, because normally an input field like this will, select field will basically be in a form or something. All right. Now I don't want it to update immediately. I only want it to update. But let's say, for instance, if I have a submit button right here, then I want to update that model. Now, in order to do that, we can do it as follows. Let's say we had the form right here. So form. I'm not going to do an action. I'm just doing this for learning purposes. So I'm just add a button right here. And I'm just going to do a submit. Just going to do a type. All right. Now, let's say in this case, we have a form right here. And if we want to, whenever this button is placed, we don't want this input field to update a, uh, immediately. Whenever there's a change right there, we want to actually only update when the submit button is placed. Now in order to do that we add the defer to the model right there. Okay. So we got the y model dot lazy, y model dot debounce, and a y model dot defer. So this will only update when this button is placed. Okay. So that's it for this one guys. If you like the video please give it a like. If you don't please give it a dislike. And if you have any positive or negative feedback, it's always appreciated. And please consider subscribing to the channel, as this will help us out a lot. Thank you guys, and see you in the next one. Goodbye.